What if I had attended another university? What if I had chosen another job? What if I had followed a different career path? Have you ever found yourself wondering how your life might have turned out if you had made a different choice? Maybe it was a job opportunity you didn't take. Or a different career path you could have pursued. Or a sport you should have continued playing. Or a relationship that could have been. These thoughts, these what-ifs, can haunt us, keeping us trapped in a cycle of regrets and missed possibilities. I too have been consumed by what-ifs. For years I dwelled on my decisions, wondering what might have been if I had made different choices. What if I had the courage at the time to make my own decision for my own future. I'll get to that in a bit, but first, let's explore this mindset together. Why do we dwell on the past? How does it affect us? And most importantly, how can we break free from the what-if trap to live a more fulfilling life? Let's begin by understanding the nature of what-if thinking. This is a psychological concept known as counterfactual thinking, where our brains construct alternative versions of past events. It's a natural cognitive process. We alter it, but it has a dual nature. On one hand, Counterfactual thinking can be helpful. It allows us to learn from our mistakes and consider how we might act differently in the future if a similar scenario arises. For example, if you didn't get a job you wanted, you might think, what if I had prepared more for that interview? This thought can motivate you to be better prepared for next time. On the other hand, this type of thinking can trap us in cycles of regret. We can become fixated on what we didn't do, or the opportunities we think we missed. And this is where what of thinking becomes harmful. Unfortunately, one of the consequences of harmful, of harmful, Counterfactual thinking is regret. Let me share my own experience. Growing up, I wasn't given the freedom to choose my own path. Instead, I followed a predetermined script, studying business, working as a banker, based on societal expectations, rather than my own desires. For years, I was trapped in a cycle of regret. I constantly wondered what my life would have been like if I had chosen differently. If I had pursued a career that truly interested me. This regret led to rumination, where I would replay the same scenarios over and over in my mind. And the scenario was, do I conform to society? and kill my dream, or not conform to society and pursue my dream. I was conflicted with these two thoughts. It consumed me. And this is where cognitive dissonance plays a significant role in this process. It's the mental discomfort we experience when we hold two conflicting beliefs or when our actions do not align with our values. In my case, I felt dissonance between my desire to pursue a career that resonated with me and the reality of living according to societal expectations. 
This this said it's not only fueled by regrets, but it's also intensified the emotional talk of constantly questioning my past decisions. Some of you may relate. Imagine the mental discomfort experienced when your actions conflict with your values. This internal conflict can lead to emotional distress like anxiety, guilt, and stress, and can even manifest physically through health issues. When we live out of alignment with our true desires, this dissonance can erode our self-esteem, cause mental fatigue, and can strain relationships even. I experienced this firsthand when I pursued a career that didn't resonate with my true passions. Believe it or not, Research in cognitive neuroscience reveals that regret activates the same brain regions as physical pain, particularly engaging the orbitofrontal cortex, which plays a key role in decision-making and emotional processing, especially when evaluating negative outcomes. This shows that regret is not merely an emotional experience. It can affect both our mental and physical well-being. I wasn't just regretting the past. I was letting that regret define my present. My thoughts were stuck in a loop, preventing me from moving forward. I was living in the shadow of what if. But my story doesn't end there. Thankfully, I was able to break free. After deep reflection, I realized that living a life dictated by societal expectations wasn't truly living. I was merely existing, not thriving. I wanted to contribute to society, but I was unable to do so while saying no to myself. This inner conflict led me to imagine a future of misery if I stayed on that path. At the time, I went as far as picturing failure in my job. How would I live with that? I even imagined getting married and having kids and whether I could bear to share that misery with them. It wasn't fair to them, and it wasn't fair to me. So I made a bold decision. For the first time in my mid-twenties, I took control of my life. I pressed the mental reset button. I went back to university to study psychology, a subject I was genuinely passionate about. It wasn't an easy decision. I had to overcome my fears, my doubts, and the voices in my head telling me it was too late to change. It was risky, because I was practically starting my professional life from scratch again. But I was guided by a new mindset. It's better to try and fail than to never try at all. This decision transformed my life. I succeeded in my studies, switched careers, and now, with a clearer mind and renewed purpose, I am excelling in a field that I love. I am no longer haunted by what's next. Instead, I am focusing on what's next. So, how do you break free from the cycles of regret? How do you let go of your what-ifs and start living fully in the present? First, accept life's imperfections. 
Life doesn't always go according to plan, and that's okay. Accepting what's beyond our control is a brave decision in itself. It allows us to stop wasting energy on things we cannot change. In my case, I realized that even though I questioned my past, it wasn't wasted. Everything happens for a reason, and my story led me here. Acceptance doesn't mean passivity. We still hold the power to make conscious choices. We can decide how we respond to our circumstances and how we move forward. Now, let's move on to you. Take a moment to acknowledge your own what-ifs, if you have any. How much of an impact, especially negative, have they had on you until today? Reflect on that. And now, please allow me to guide you in challenging your what-ifs. Ask yourself, what do you truly want? How badly do you want it? Are the risks worth it? How willing are you to take the next step? Most importantly, how can you find peace with your decision, whether you succeed or fail? By asking yourself these questions, you shift your focus from the past to the future. You move from what's if to what's next. So, I urge you to find your purpose, find your motivation, plan, assess the risks, and execute. And when a decision has to be made, ensure it's an action, not just a reaction. Before I go, I want to emphasize the value of embracing uncertainty and adopting a growth mindset. Life is unpredictable, but that unpredictability is what makes it exciting. Instead of dwelling on the past, let's focus on the present and look towards the future with clear goals. Our future deserves our full attention. By letting go of what ifs, we can live a much more fulfilling life. And remember, the power to choose is in your hands. And by saying no to your dreams, you are rejecting your own ambition. Now, let me leave you with a healthier what-if question. What if you said yes to your dreams? And I will leave that answer to you. Thank you.